Hi, this is James, and in this viewer requested video, I'm going to be taking a deeper dive into this week's Lenormand reading. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in and joining me for this expanded edition on this week's Oracle Outlook video reading. I was asked by one of the viewers who saw the initial reading, which by the way I will be leaving a link to in the description box below. So she saw the initial reading like I said and she asked me if I would be willing to expand on it using the Hidden Dynamics and the Essence card. The Hidden Dynamics and the Essence card are not techniques that I have come up with all on my own. They're not my own thing. So I want to give credit where credit is due. I got these techniques from a wonderful resource on Lenormand, a book called The Complete Lenormand Oracle Handbook. It is by Kathleen Matthews. It is my personal favorite resource material on the subject of Lenormand. If you're no stranger to these videos, you know that I talk about it quite often and I highly recommend it. And so one of the reasons why I love this book so much is that Kathleen has devoted an entire chapter to working with the playing cards. And so the hidden dynamics are just one of the ways in which you can use the playing cards to arrive at more information about the cards that are on the table and the information that's coming through the reading. And then the essence card is a way to kind of total things up and come up with a final card that would be in a nutshell what the entire reading is all about. So we will be doing those two processes in the following segment. So in the segment that's coming up, I will be taking a closer look at the playing cards and showing you how you can come up with the hidden dynamics. And we will also be seeing what the hidden dynamics are in this particular reading and how those cards come into play. And then we will be doing the same thing with the essence card following that. And so now that I've given a little bit of setup about what the intention is for the video, I always like to talk about the deck that I am working with. So in this particular case, I'm going to be working with the same deck that I did in the initial reading. And once again, I'm working with the Ronna George Lenormand. It is by Ronna George and Callie French, and it is published by US Game Systems Incorporated. So now that I've introed the deck as well, let's take a closer look at the table and get to seeing what playing cards have to say about the hidden dynamics. And here we are with the cards on the table that made up the initial line of five reading. So if you'll remember, we had going from left to right, we had fish, we had child, ring was our central card. And so this is be the card that we will be focusing on in this video in particular, gentlemen and a letter. So those are the cards that made up the line. And so the way you work with the hidden dynamics, you start with the middle card. So the middle card is ring. And so the central issue and focus, if you remember from the initial video, is around commitments. It's around agreements. It's around promises because those were the keyword associations that I used in that initial reading. So going with that as the focus, if we use commitment, if we use agreement, if we use promise, as the focus, then the playing cards are going to give us more information as to what are the dynamics that are playing a part in either a commitment, an agreement, or a promise. So the way it works is that we take the playing card inserts on the outer ends of the line. So in fish, we have the king of diamonds, and in letter, we have the seven of spades. So what you do is you take the numerical value of those cards. So kings in cardomancy are valued at 13. So this is 13 and then plus 7 is 20 because you add 13 and 7. And then since the total is 20, we consider what card in the system matches that number. And it is a number that's below 36. So what we do is we take out the deck and we look for the 20th card. And so the 20th card in the deck is Garden. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going through the deck, looking for the Garden card. Here it is. 
And what I like to do is when I'm doing a dynamics, I like to place one card, the card that totals that, on one side of the line. So here we have garden. And garden is a card that can represent things being social, things being public. It could represent a group or a community. It could also represent the outdoors and nature. It could also represent a social event or some sort of public gathering. So if we go with the idea that rain is about a commitment or an agreement, garden could suggest that it is one of a social nature. It could be something that has to do with the public or society at large, or it could just have to do with a gathering of a, uh, a group of people or a community. So that would be one dynamic playing into what Ring is talking about, right? So if we go with the idea that I talked about an agreement, it could be an agreement that's made with a group of people or a community, something of that nature. But again, I'm going to go more with the commitment aspect. So this could be a social commitment, or it could be a public engagement if we go with the idea that ring could be also be about engagement. So again, the gist of it here with garden is that on one side of the agreement or the commitment issue is that it has something to do with the public or other people, right? So remember, it, I talked about this dichotomy about the relationship that we have with ourselves and the relationship that we have with others. And so the garden card would be the relationships or the commitments that we have with other people, right? So there is that. Now, what we do is then is we take the, the playing card inserts for the inner cards. So for child, we have the jack of spades. And for the gentleman, we have the ace of hearts. Same thing, we just take the numerical value. So we here, jacks are valued at 11. So we have 11, and then we have one for the ace. 11 and one is 12. So we do the same thing, we go through the deck and we look for the 12th card. And the 12th card in Lenormand is birds. So that is the card I'm looking for. Ah, and here we go. So just like I did, I'm going to set this card on the other side, just so I could have the two dynamics on opposite sides of the line. So now here we have birds. And so birds is a card that can represent communication, but it's verbal in nature. This card usually represents um, the spoken word. So this could represent things that we are talking about or discussing. So in one regard, it could be a commitment or an agreement or a promise that is spoken about. And that kind of sets a different kind of stage, if you will, for what I talked about in the initial video, because I talked about the pairing of ring and letter could represent a commitment that is written in nature. Right, and I even mentioned birds in that video. So here we have the card actually showing up. So now here we have the difference between something that's written in terms of an agreement and a spoken agreement or an agreement that is being discussed because birds could represent discussion. Now, if we go with the idea that there is a difference between the two different types of commitment, here we have again with garden, we have a commitment to other people and then this one could be more one-on-one. -on -one. And I love this because the depiction on the card has two birds. So for me, this usually goes with a one-to-one -one relationship, you know, talking with one person. So this could just be something having a group dynamic versus something more one-to-one, -one, right? So that would be the way you would take a look at the hidden dynamics. So the way you would read it would be the commitment ring is between garden and birds. And so you could literally translate that to say the commitment is between other people and one to one. So again, it kind of highlights this uh, dichotomy that I mentioned in the initial video about the relationship that we're having with ourselves versus the relationship that we're having with other people. And so again, it makes me feel like this could just be groups of people, a group dynamic, um, hanging out in public versus doing something with one specific person in particular. Again, going with the idea that birds can represent, especially when there's two on the card, can represent a pair or a couple, right? So that would be the difference between the two. The last thing that we can do is we can take all the pip cards and add them up all the way across. So we have, with the king, we have 13. We have 11 with the jack. We have one with the ace of clubs, 
another one with the Ace of Hearts, and seven with the Seven of Spades. And so the total is 33. And so you do the same thing. If it's under 36, then you just go through the deck and find the corresponding number or card that matches the number. So I'm looking for the 33rd card. And in the deck, that is key. So that's the card I'm looking for. And here it is. So what I usually do at this point, I like to take this card and put it in the center. So I'm going to put that right above ring. And so now my meanings for key, when it comes up, it can usually represent something that's important. If we go with the idea that the focus card, ring, is talking about a commitment or an agreement, then key, describing that more fully or more in detail, would suggest it's something that's important or it's something that's certain or there's going to be some sort of discovery because key can represent something being discovered, something being revealed. It also represents answers or solutions, right? So as I set the card down, I'm looking at it here. The answer or the solution lies between something being public and then something being more personal or one-to-one, -one, right? So it could just be a matter of if, let's say, the scenario here is that a person has to make a decision between honoring a commitment that's more public, more social, that involves other people or a group versus something more one-to-one, -one, like maybe with a partner or, you know, the other half of a couple, let's say. Then with key here in the middle, and this is just, I'm just basing this based on the visual, just laying the card in the middle, could be saying that the answer is going to lie somewhere in between social and more one-to-one -one or more personal. So that is how you could use the playing cards to add more information through the process of the hidden dynamics. And so now let's move on and see what the essence card is for the entire reading. And so now we're going to do some work to come up with the essence card. And again, the essence card would be a way to kind of wrap up a reading and kind of bring it down or distill it down to a single card, meaning that that card would be saying too, like, this is what the reading is about in a nutshell. So all you do is you just take the numerical value on all the cards. So we're going to add those up now. And so we have fish starting out the line of fish is card number 34. So it's 34. And then we have child. Child is 13. Ring is 25. Gentleman is 28. And letter is 27. So adding those all the way across, we have a total of 127. So it's over 36, or even in this case, because I'm working with the Ron and George Lenormand and there are four additional cards. So the total is over 40. So what you do in that particular case is you take all the digits and you add them all across. So we have 1 plus 2 is 3, and then plus 7 is 10. And so we look for the 10th card in the deck. So the tenth card is Scythe, so I'm just going to be looking for that card. So here we have it, and I'm going to again, I'm going to place it above ring. So Scythe is a card that can represent a process of elimination. It can usually represent something being cut out, something being eliminated, something being removed. Right? So that's the first thing. If we go with the idea that Ring could be talking about an agreement or a promise, Scythe would say, suggest that there's a broken promise or a broken commitment or a broken engagement because Scythe can represent a break or something being broken. Right? It could also be if we play on the idea in the previous segment where we had a situation between something being public and something being maybe more one-to-one, -one, then Scythe could represent some kind of disconnection, right? And that would be maybe, if we're moving from one to the other, maybe eliminating something having to do with the public or removing people so that the commitment uh, becomes more doable, more manageable, more personal. Then it could be, what do we need to kind of do to kind of um, sever things, break things, um, split things, 
Again, those are all aspects of scythe. Scythe can represent anything being cut, anything being severed, anything being split. So this could just be a commitment that's severed, you know, a commitment that's broken, you know, a, a disconnection that is recurring, meaning like it happens more than once, that kind of thing. So even though we may have issues with commitments, agreements, and promises, there may be something that happens that we may have to break a particular engagement, commitment, agreement, or promise. So that's what I'm getting from that. It could also be too that Scythe would suggest like whatever ring is in terms of a commitment or agreement or a promise. I'm going to go more with the commitment, right? Then this would be something that happens suddenly, something that happens quickly, um, something that's swift because the Scythe card can represent things that are sudden, unexpected, or quick or swift. So that's another way of describing it. It could also be too for some people that there is an engagement that's going to be broken and that could be a literal like commitment. You know, if we go with the idea that ring can represent a marriage, you know, that kind of thing, then it could just be an engagement that is broken for whatever reason. And it may be broken suddenly or unexpectedly. But I'm going to go more with the general that there may be commitments or an agreement or a promise or a promise, I should say, excuse me, that takes place this week where we may have to break it. And it may be due to something that happens unexpectedly or suddenly. It's making me feel like uh, if we go with the idea that garden, remember garden was on this side representing one of the dynamics, it could be something that is suddenly or unexpected that happens with other people. Like it's making me feel like if it does happen, it's beyond our control because other people are involved. So that is how I would look at the Essence card, and that will round out this expanded edition of this week's Oracle Outlook reading. I'm James Tim Mitchell, and as I close, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and sharing this space here with me for this week's expanded edition, and I look forward to sharing the same space with you again in our next video reading together. So until then, I'm hoping that you have a wonderful day, and I'm hoping that you have a wonderful week. Take care.